Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into the Bitcoin charts. But wait, what is that? I can hear something. It's a pre record Breaking news. A shocking turn of events has sent ripples through the political and financial worlds. In the wake of a failed assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump, Bitcoin has surged over 7%, reaching $62,000. This dramatic rise in Bitcoin's value has caught the attention of investors and analysts alike. Today, we'll dive deep into what happened, why it happened, and what it could mean for the future of the cryptocurrency market. Let's start with a brief overview of the incident. This time, we saw an immediate reaction in the cryptocurrency market, particularly with Bitcoin. But why did Bitcoin in particular respond so strongly? According to an article from Finance Magnates, there's a growing trend of Bitcoin becoming intertwined with political movements. The slogan, Make Bitcoin Great Again, is gaining traction among industry leaders who see the potential changes as opportunity to make money via Bitcoin's growth. Key figures in the crypto space are betting on Trump's influence to boost Bitcoin's prominence. They believe that this potential return to the political arena could bring more attention and legitimacy to digital currencies. This sentiment is resonating with many, as seen in the immediate market reaction. To understand this phenomenon, it's essential to look at the historical context. Bitcoin has often been viewed as a hedge against traditional financial systems and political instability. Events like this can amplify that perception, driving more investors towards cryptocurrencies. We've seen similar patterns in the past. For instance, the Greek financial crisis in 2015, Bitcoin saw a significant uptick as people sought alternatives to traditional banking. Likewise, political uncertainties such as Brexit have also led to spikes in Bitcoin's value. But what does this latest spike in Bitcoin mean for the current market? Experts are divided. Some see this as a temporary surge driven by emotional trading and political uncertainty while others argue that it could mark the beginning of a more significant trend, where political events play a crucial role in the valuation of cryptocurrencies. Looking at the data, we can see a clear correlation between the news of the assassination attempt and the price jump. Investors are reacting swiftly, but how long will this momentum last? Market sentiment is a powerful driver in the world of cryptocurrency. Social media platforms and forums are buzzing with decisions about Bitcoin's future, with many expressing optimism about its potential rise. Posts on Twitter and Reddit show a mix of excitement and cautious optimism. But beyond the immediate price surge, what are the long-term implications of this event for Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency market? Bitcoin's role as a decentralized digital currency makes it appealing in times of political unrest. If incidents like this become more frequent, we could see an increasing reliance on cryptocurrencies as a safe haven. This incident also highlights the global nature of Bitcoin. While the event happened in the United States, the impact is felt worldwide. Investors from different countries are reacting, showing how interconnected the global financial system has become. So what's next for Bitcoin? Predicting the future of cryptocurrency is always challenging, but several factors will play a crucial role. Experts suggest that regulatory developments, technological advancements, and further political events will shape Bitcoin's trajectory. In summary, the failed assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump has led to a significant surge in Bitcoin's value, underscoring the cryptocurrency's sensitivity for political events. Whether this is a temporary spike or the beginning of a new trend remains to be seen. Thank you, Mr. News Hamilton. That was a fantastic little update there. Let me know if you guys want to see more stuff like that. I don't know if it's cringe. I don't know what, but uh, yeah, just feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, I enjoyed making that anyway. But uh, what we can see here, what we can see here is uh, a massive CME gap. We're talking, this is where CME closed on Friday, and this is where it opened again. We're talking about over a 4% gap. I have not seen this in years uh, in Bitcoin, okay? So something like this is massive. And um, what we will say is typically we expect 
expect the CME gap to be filled uh, in the next week. This is the, the main edge we go for here. Uh, we were actually long, uh, sorry, we were actually short uh, when this thing went down. Okay, uh, where is this thing? Yeah, so when, when this actually happened, guys, we were actually short expecting to get back to that CME gap area. Okay, obviously that is around 57.5 uh, and uh, yeah, we were at 58.4. So we were already like 2% up here uh, where, where we were expecting that to be filled. It did start filling, then the event happened, and then we got some market volatility and luckily I was awake. It was 5 a.m. for me, but luckily I was awake and I was like, okay, this is, this is too, gonna be too volatile. Obviously this could pump or it could dump. We do not wanna be caught out here. So we closed the trade, super, super small loss, like a $30 loss, okay? We'll take it because we would have lost a hell of a lot more if we held this trade open, okay? And that just comes from experience from uh, many, many different events, COVID, all these black swans we've had over the years, even the dump from 6K to 3K in September of 2018, I remember, right? Uh, so uh, yeah. We will, uh, we will take that as a win, okay? We did not get destroyed <laughs> in this pump. Unfortunately, yes, uh, I have been asleep uh, and busy, uh, so I haven't uh, taken advantage of this pump here, but we did have this measure move plotted in. This measure move is now complete, as you can see here. So we're looking for some kind of high to form. We're looking for some resistance, some sell pressure uh, as this momentum wears off, and then we'll be looking for a short back down to the CME gap. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but just based on the data, what typically happens happens with these events is we'll get a massive market move uh, and it won't just bang it to 100k from there. Uh, typically, we would expect this to come down, fill the CME gap as it has done every single time in Bitcoin's history. Okay, when there's a CME gap, guys, we can expect to violate it a little bit. It doesn't have to fill the whole thing. It doesn't have to go all the way back down to 57.5, but uh, typically filling a CME gap will be kind of uh, maybe 10 to 30% inside uh, of the CME gap range, right? Uh, that That is something I would consider filled. Uh, unfortunately, we have not done that. We've, we've had a tiny wick inside it. Some people would even argue that this is already filled, but I would uh, I would beg to differ. I would say no, uh, we, we should be coming down at some point to fill this again. Uh, not to mention, when we are looking at the macro, uh, even if this is a ma macro change with, uh, with uh, your boy winning the election or something, right, this year, then uh, yeah, I mean, we can just look at levels to be broken and, and, and get in from there, right? But as of right now, we're looking for some structural break and then we're looking to come all the way back down to roughly, roughly, uh, we'll, we'll call it 59K, okay? 59K is roughly where we're aiming here. We're not short yet, but that is the big, big trade we are looking for next. Uh, this could happen around this area, okay? This could happen around 65K, where the four hour volume weighted ATR band is. This is super important, this level. Uh, this is huge. Uh, if we get over it, of course, it's huge, but uh, typically it will act as like the top area for our range. So uh, yeah, and we haven't actually touched it that much this run. I was uh, I was expecting this to be hit a lot more, bringing this data up, but it's actually, uh, it, it seems to come off the one hour a lot more, which we are currently above, right? So uh, one thing we will do here uh, in terms of an edge, in terms of looking for that edge on Bitcoin, it's gonna be waiting for the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band to be broken towards the downside. Um, as well as this structural line here, okay? Uh, if those two can align, that'd be fantastic. Uh, as of right now, I'm not gonna be trying to invertedly catch knives or or catch knives from the other side. I don't know how to say that, but <laughs> I'm not gonna be shorting into this blindly, of course, guys. Uh, but what we will say is this should come down at some point to fill the gap. So we will wait for that structure to break and then we will look for that short from that point. And there are areas where you can do this. You can do this on the 15 minute volume weighted ATR band if you're an aggressive leverage junkie. Uh, and I'm, I may even do that if it looks like super bearish, right? Uh, or you can do it at the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band, right? This is really what I'm looking for here. Uh, there will also be some trades in between these two guys as well. Uh, so that will be an edge as well. But uh, more often than not, we just look for the structural break, right? So we'll see how long this thing goes. If it does want to blast it to 80K, absolutely fine with me, guys. Absolutely fine. The market would just be in easy mode again. That's fine for me, right? Uh, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm, I'm saying quite a little bearish things, but it's actually better and easier if it's bullish, okay? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the data here. And we are at the end of a measure move, okay? Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we are coming off an event. Of event momentum does wear off, so we should be expecting something here uh, to towards the downside after this kind of ends, right? <clears throat> Looking at the macro here, okay? Looking at the macro, we can see we did initiate that measure move towards the downside. Sorry guys, I'm trying to fight off this cough I had last week. <coughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, 
I'm, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay here. Uh, yeah, if we are looking at the macro here on the daily, we can see, yes, bull market barrier has turned orange again. That's okay. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. Uh, we will get the rest of this raw hash rate data tonight. Uh, obviously, as you guys know, uh, when these two moving averages cross towards the upside, bullish as hell. Massive, massive long signals coming through. The last long signal here was at 30k, uh, and we closed that out at 61k. Easy game. Uh, the one before that was at 20k, closed out at 30k, okay? That's a 30% trade. Get some, all right? Uh, as well as that, uh, yeah, this is obviously the bear market, so it's going to be less reliable. But the last bull market, you can see here, 19K up to 50K, just uh, the cycle continues, right? The cycle continues. So uh, yes, th this is the best indicator. It is free. It's on my trading view. So feel free to check that out. And what we will do here is wait for that signal for a massive macro uptrend. And then the bull is back on. Right now, we are looking at this as an event. This is not a massive market shift. This is not something where the bull market's back on yet. Anyway, this is something where we're going to be cautious. We're going to be precise with this. We're going to be ex executing edges to make money. Okay, I've been doing this for eight years now, guys. This is how we do it. This is how to make money uh, from this stuff. Uh, trying to trade this now is incredibly risky, particularly after a 7% pump. Was it 7%? Yeah, I think it was 7%. Uh, but yeah, as you can see right now, uh, we've got the three-day volume weighted ATR band. Fantastic if we stay above that, actually. Uh, if, we can, if we can get into this 65 to 70K area and we stay above this three-day, it's really, really good for Bitcoin. But uh, as of right now, we're going to look at this as an event. We're going to look for that structural break. We're going to look at that CME close. And we're going to say, hey, uh, yes, we are going to try and fill that gap. This does make sense to me. So let's just wait for that structure break and let's get in from there. Uh, besides that, let's take a look at some on-chain stuff here. I know I normally do this. <coughs> I know I normally do this. Um, uh, uh, at the start, of course, but we had a little news breakdown. Uh, and we can see here that, yeah, July 14th here, guys, uh, is at 60,700. And uh, it is still orange, okay? It's not green, it's not red, it's orange, which is neutral. And as long as it's neutral, we will be behaving in a neutral manner, okay? Um, liquidation heat map, we can see so many orders of just junkies coming in uh, with very, very close liquidations. Uh, we, will, uh, we will watch this intently because I imagine these market makers will want to just destroy these people <laughs> as soon as uh, as soon as the momentum wears off here it does look like it is starting to slow down as well okay uh, we do have one more thing here there we, there we go yeah so 75.5 here for the energy value when we get above that level it's parabolic as you can see here with the bitcoin price in the in the past okay even this one the bitcoin price basically doubled okay this one before we went on a massive run like ridiculous money, like 100x run or something like this, right? Uh, so yeah, we're looking to get over that 75.5 level. I'm gonna have to end this video soon, guys, because my throat is killing me and I've got uh, another video to do as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully you found this valuable. Um, ETFs last week, just a little update, been really, really uh, bullish last week. Institutions have been swiping this up. And again, this is before the event. So we'll see how this, uh, this kind of uh, manifests today, see if institutions are backing it or not. But um, yeah, looking fantastic here across the board. A little bit better for Bitcoin uh, just out there. And again, uh, just, just to highlight the trade we are looking for here, guys, uh, it would be shorting off this four hour volume weighted ATR band as, as uh, kind of shorter term momentum breaks. Okay. Uh, and then also, if we lose this 60 minute upper volume weighted ATR band as well, then uh, we'll be looking for a short down to this CME close. And it's not, uh, not going to be a massive short, but it's, it's, it's enough, okay? We could get 2 or 3% there down to the lower 50 minute volume weighted ATR band. All right, so that's going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. I put a little bit of creativity into it, but um, yeah, let me know what you think of it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Goodbye from me, Hamilton.